Welcome to episode 111 of the Muck Podcast, a member of the Odd Pods Media Network. Listen in as we discuss the dark and sometimes weird true stories in American politics. I'm Tina Hadamio. And I'm Hillary Doherty. Hillary. Hi! Hi! P.S. Look at us with our cute sweaters. We didn't even plan this. And it's... And it's close to Valentine's Day. It's yes, you'll hear this after right. Valentine's Day, but we're still like in a Valentine's vibe. Uh, speak for yourself. Okay. <laughs> good for you. Oh, your love. Good for you, oh. Tina. Good for you. <laughs> oh, congratulations, Tina, Woo! on all that love. Aww. But it's a very cute sweater. I like this sweater. Yeah, you're adorable. <gasps> you are effing adorable. I have to tell you that. Um, my students, like, I wore this, I think it was, you like, did? last week or something, and oh. my students were like, oh, that's such a cute sweater. And then the other day I had, it was a very banana outfit. What's that? It was, like, a Banana Republic, like, Ann Taylor. It was, like, these, like, kind of wide-legged cropped, like, stripy pants with a, I had a little white shirt tucked in. Uh-huh. And um, one of my students was like, um, I like your fit. And I was like, what? Your fit? Your drip? I was like, oh, uh- Oh, I yeah. was like, oh, hey. Um, I'm so glad yeah. you brought this up. Hey. I'm so glad yeah. you brought this up. Because <laughs> Tina said to me, ask your daughter if you have any drip. And I was like, <laughs> okay. Wow. Hey. No idea what that means. <laughs> so I asked my daughter. She literally went like this. Like, up and down. And she it, was like, no. Nah. <laughs> uh, and I was like, now, you know I got more style on my little pinky than all yes. these damn mothers over at that yes, school. Yes, it's true. This is some bullshit, but I'm her mother, yes. so that doesn't count. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't count. But yeah, and then I had, I wore my little pink Converse today, and then my students were like, look at, oh, oh, Miss J. I was like, oh, you guys are so cute. I love that they call you Miss J. Yeah, That's what I'm going to call you for they now. They call me Miss J. <laughs> Miss yeah. J. Yeah, or oh, they're Miss J, Miss Ma'am. I love it. Miss Ma'am's my favorite. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Doubling up there a little bit. So cute. Um, so thank you for recording tonight because we're recording on a Thursday night. Yes. I've got skating in a couple <gasps> hours. Hi. Ooh, this is a fun field tonight. It's a fun night. And it's, this is like the last work thing I have to do because uh, I have the work day off tomorrow. Yes. I'm going out of town. Woo! Um, yeah, Alfredo asked me if I wanted to join him at the um, the state LGBTQ Winter Conference oh, in St. Pete. Amazing, which I fucking love, St. Petersburg, Florida. If you have not been, you should totally go. It's such a fun city. It's very so old cool. school. Oh my god, freaking love it. Aww. So that'll be fun. I'm gonna see my sister in law Diana. I haven't seen her in a while, like a year. So wow. I'm very excited. I get to see her. Yeah, I'm gonna wear my holiday party dress oh. on a Saturday. Woo. Cocktail Ooh. hour, do a little Hat. turn, a little turn on the dance Whoa. floor, Tina. Oh, you're going to be <laughs> killing it on the dance floor. That's right. Me and Anthony Ginsburg. You know Anthony's <gasps> oh, going, Anthony. which I'm so excited about. I so, love him so much. I said, we're going to have a lot of drinks. He goes, and we're going to learn. And I was like, oh, yeah, the conference. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's right. we got to go to classes. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. my God. But, you know, he is, he is like the epitome of like, yeah, he's such an incredible volunteer oh my God. person. He's the greatest, and, and he loves to nice. dance, and he loves Aww. to have fun. He's so he's and he's just, just so nice. I know. He oh listen, he's God. a doll baby. I wanted to bring up that, and I wanted to bring up the fact that we had Emmanuel George on the podcast. Yeah, it came out last Friday, so please check it out. Yes. Um, he's doing incredible work. We now we, I have to send Emmanuel a message about this, but we last night we were at the Dolphin Democrats meeting, you know, working the tables, yes. and in walks. The one and only Bobby, Bobby DeBose. And let me tell you what happens when somebody like this walks into the room. <laughs> Tina's at the check-in table. I am kind of like right in view of the door because I'm treasurer. So I'm like doing all this math. With, yes. you know, I'm doing math, honey. Numbers. And he walks in and Tina looks at me. She's like, we had masks on, right? But her eyes are like... <laughs> so I'm like, Gina... Tina. We don't even know what to do. No, because this person to us is a celebrity. <laughs> this, is, this is like to my mom yes. today. I was like, I'm like, this is like Leonardo DiCaprio walks in, mom. Like yes. to us, like when Omari Hardy came in. Oh my God. Like that was a it's exciting. huge deal for us. Like it's exciting. So it's then exciting. afterwards, so he got up and he spoke and he announced that he's going to be running for Woo! Broward County Commissioner, which is huge because he just turned out as a Florida House rep and he was a minority leader while he was there the last two years. He's an incredible leader. We were so, um, it was so cool that we got to talk Just to, to hang him out after with the him. meeting yes. for like 45 minutes. And of course, I'm like 
yelling about the party and I'm like, well, what about this? And what about yes, this? Yeah. And he's like, girl, you know, he's oh, doing it was, business. It was so good. It was so good. It was this inside look and yeah. The, and I said this to Hillary earlier, but you can tell how much he loved his job. Yeah. He loved his job. Yeah. He loves the he loves all of it and what I think he's a great person to serve. Yeah, he really you know, is. He and loves he's smart. to serve, and he's brilliant. He's very smart and handsome. And handsome. Woo! And so, oh, so <laughs> this is funny. So after we had a presentation last night, where this oh, Dr. Frazier, he gave yes. a presentation about the history of the Dolphin Democrats in Broward, and also, but really about the history of gays and lesbians in Broward County. Yes, it was in fascinating. The, from like the 50s and 60s forward and how they built political power here. It was in fucking... I, and this, the news I was, clippings, he had yeah, all I was, those news clippings. I was taking pictures yes, of the I was, street. I, I'm like, it's something I, I, we have to cover this. Have this is, yeah, this I, I know so that you're going to have a story soon. Yeah, this is from one so of those incredible. People, one of those mayors. Yes, and so after the meeting, Bobby DeVos comes up to me and he said, and I thought, I didn't, honestly, he kind of started walking over, I was like, humming, 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 like, I don't know what I'm into, right? And he says, you guys need to have him on your podcast, this guy, this Dr. Frasia. And he said, he, this is history that needs to be preserved, like somebody needs yes. to record it. And I was like, oh yeah, we will, we're going to have him on the podcast. Because I think I said that to you, like, we yes, should have him on the podcast. Yes, you said, yes, you said Lil yes. And then I said to Bobby, to suppose I go, do you remember when you were on our podcast? And he was like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> And then he so said, much. I know who you are. And I was like, I, I, oh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> Like if I was floating off, oh I was like, God. I was like, hi. Oh, oh my God. MG. Yes. And then I was like, I think I was like grabbing for you. I was like, yes. come over here really it's just, quick. It just, it was, it, it's just wonderful one to be able to engage with good people in the community mm -hmm. and you were speaking earlier to me about how some people just think like everything's corrupt and all politicians yeah. are bad and and they're not all bad mm -hmm. it's just the bad politicians are the ones that we hear about and see about because they're bad yeah you know and that's why little muck is, i think little muck yeah. is so great because it gives us the opportunity to highlight absolutely people doing good things and saying yeah there are good people out there are people who are there to actually work for you yeah so I really like kind of wanted to hit him up about um, when we were talking to him about the things that I scream about on here. And I know that I sound crazy because I watched, you know, when you send me, the, you say the YouTube's ready, I go watch it. And I'm like, holy shit, I'm crazy. But there's, I see moments where I, it fucking just snaps. Yes. Because I've got it built, like it's rolling, rolling. And you could say one thing and I'm like, God damn it. Like yes. the guy from TikTok, you're like, oh, he was so smug. And I was like, that's it. Like everything just came up. <laughs> Because it was like, I could see that person in yeah. my head just being such a dick about all these things. But um, my point was that he kind of, you know, gave us that behind the scenes look where I'm like, okay, a lot of my questions that were answered about like why th certain things go the way that they do there. It's not okay. Right. The system's broken. The whole thing is fucking, cr like it's, the power shift is so, it's so unbalanced there. Like yeah. all, everything that's happening is so, it's so bad, but you know, what the what he did as a leader, which he talked about on our Little Muck, and you should go listen to it, the Bobby yeah. DeBose Little Muck, it, he talked about how the Democrats ask very specific questions on the floor when the bill is being debated because that is that is then put into transcripts. Right, and, and when, it's on the record. Yeah, so when it passes, it gets signed. They, have, they, they work with the ACLU and all of these other organizations, Equality Florida, to use all that information, get them on the record, on the floor, about what this bill is about, and then sue the and fuck they, out yeah, of it. And then they can and, challenge it. Yeah, and they have, absolutely. Yeah, and now they have the, the pay. And it, it is smart. Yeah. Because he said, I, as a leader, he's like, I know this is going to pass. There's absolutely nothing we can screw. We can fight. We can scream. We can cry. Right. We can get on the floor and say all these things. But we have to get them on the record. We do right. be very strategic about it. And I. And have them say things specifically. Yes. It's very smart. Very good. So. Anyway, uh, I love Bobby DeBose. I'm so yes. excited for his run for Broward County Commission. I, you know, we do this, sometimes we do this thing where we're like, oh, he's coming, someone's coming back to run again. But you know what? Sometimes some you need are, good people, people to do that. Good. Sometimes you just need I good people. I am excited about that. Me too. That. When he walked in, he said that I'm going to run for this. Uh, I was like, hallelujah. Woo! Let's go Broward. So, I mean, Broward yeah. needs. Yeah, we need strong. We, we need, need strong voices. Strong people and um that's I mean that's that's it I just need yeah, that I love it so yeah and I have one more thing I know yes, I talked please. about it last no, week but 
the education bills that are running through this country, yeah, it's too it's too much. It's too much, and we have the the Indiana bill, the Oklahoma bill, mm. Alabama bill, um, and all of these bills are one of them is a, a few of them, and, and I think it's like the same thing, and we've talked about it before, where the Repub there's this pack that I think like generates all of the language, and then state after state starts putting the similar bills. Like they do it with abortion, and now they're doing it with yeah, these, edu these education bills. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, you know, um, the lesson plans, like, you know, these, the, the, I think it was Indiana and Alabama that have passed, and I could be wrong, but have passed that the, the lesson plans have to be done by June 30th. And parents have the option to opt out. Right. They can go through every day and go, oh, they're gonna opt out of this and they're gonna, so look, they're gonna opt out of an essay, they're gonna yeah. opt out of, and then what happens? Yeah. So is a teacher now creating alternative curriculum for all the different days that kids are off? Like, right. how, are, how do do, I, can anyone manage and that? And who has all of their curriculum done by June 30th. Yeah, and number one, you can't, if you're differ differentiating instruction. That's you, right. Year by year, I could teach the same story, the same thing, and I'm teaching it differently depending on the group of kids that are sitting in front of me. Right. And sometimes I might get through that curriculum in two days. Sometimes it might take me four days. Right. Because you, like, some kids get it, some kids don't. Now, this year, we're dealing with kids returning from a pandemic, mm -hmm. so they're already behind. And so it's taking longer to kind of get them back into gear. And, mm. and like I do, like I'm doing so much of this, a lot of small group instruction mm -hmm. and, and breaking things down because I, I need it to be in pieces for them because it's taking them, you know, they're getting there, but, but I don't know who expects. And I heard something today that I did not think of. And I heard, you know, I've heard all the things and. I really believe it's about we're going to empower the charter schools and the private schools and the voucher program. But someone else, I heard a teacher talk about this um, online on like a TikTok or something. And she said that the only way that you can sort of have this is if there is pre-scripted curriculum. And there's already some of that that happens right. in schools where it's pre-scripted. But like you get like you're teaching a certain class, like you but have to follow the script. I right? get that, but Tina, do you even get books? No. My sisters in North Carolina, they haven't had books in 10 fucking years. Right. I they mean, don't have I mean, books in the schools. <laughs> You're going to tell me the state's coming up with a scripted right. fucking curriculum for you? Right. That's not going to happen. That's so why I teachers do, write yeah. their own shit. So I do, I mean, I do have, um, I do have books in my class. I have two classes that I, they, I don't, but even when I do have books, I, I add things, I supplement. Of course. Like, you know, because it's like, oh, we're learning this. They didn't get it. Let me supplement with another example Stupid. of something similar. But... The scripted cu curriculum is from these education oh, companies and these right. testing companies. Right. So if it, and those are people oh that are God. lobbying for certain yep. things, and then if it's like, oh well, here's a whole year's worth of curriculum, and like people are going to be making money. Yeah. And that's another side I did not think about with this. The same thing that happened in Florida when we started with all of that testing, and mm -hmm. when Jeb Bush was yes. governor, yes. and his it was his brother-in-law or somebody that mm -hmm. like ran the testing company, and we're doing all these tests they made a lot of money yeah on that upcap yeah it's just disgusting and how would parents feel about that that they don't the care. education they don't curriculum, care. These, these, the same parents that would be complaining about that do they understand that the curriculum's coming from a company that was bought and paid for by law like they paid all these they, like a pack or whatever paid this right. money so that they could be the top bidder in this I mean doesn't that matter to you that, that, doesn't that, matter. that it's not based on how good the curriculum is or what's in it that it's been, like, can we just trust teachers to do their fucking job? Right. Can we please? I wouldn't want Tina coming to my job and doing payroll. Yeah. Like, wouldn't well, be, I wouldn't you go to don't my. Want that to yeah. Happen. I wouldn't go to my ex's <laughs> job at the hospital and perform his, you know, cancer treatments on people. Yeah. Like, this is not. I, you know what I mean? That I certainly would never step into a fucking classroom in front of a group of children and be like. Ah, yeah, okay. yeah. I don't know. I don't want anything to do that. I trust the school system. I trust the teachers. Like, we yeah. should be able to do that. Because guess what? I've never seen a problem. Here's a funny thing that happened in a committee today that I wanted to read to you. It's a great tweet. Equality Florida put this out. Uh, Senator Lori, B Borman, Bur uh, excuse me, Lori Berman was asking questions in a committee about the, um, uh, you know, consulting with the parents. The school has to yes. consult parents. So she says, quote, Am I right to read that this bill would allow a parent to sue a school if their child requests a vegetarian meal for lunch and they are not consulted? 
And Senator Baxley says, yes. Yes. So yes. if a kid goes to school and was like, do you have anything that's non-meat because I don't eat meat? They yeah. have to call the parents yeah. and yeah. say, um, your kid wants a Who vegetarian meal. Who has time? Meal. How many thousands of kids? Yeah. And then uh, with the you, book, they the can book sue that, the school. The book that we're reading, the conversation that we're having. Yeah. And with children, oh different things come up. Like today, I gave I gave my students a, 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 a bunch of different prompts, and I put them in little groups, and I said, okay, we're, we're going to talk about who are the stakeholders involved in these topics if you're going to write about them, and you're trying to think about different perspectives. And it was like, you know, one of them was like, organ donations should be compulsory. Um, you know, uh, putting a sugar tax on on food to prevent obesity, and you know all of these different things, and they're and they're going through, and some of them were a little, you know, a hot topic issue, but the 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 discord, I allow both sides, right? Like I understand that there are perspectives outside of my own, and I would never stifle a child who, and and I have a kid who's always like, oh, I've got the other side here. I'm like, let's hear it, let's hear it, let's hear it, and you know, there I. It's good to have that debate, of and it's course. good to think about the different people yes. and perspectives yes. that, that you want to consider. That I don't under why is that, I don't get why that is wrong, and to then have some parent going, "Oh my God, you mentioned you know um, that it was we had another topic that was like um, is is traveling necessary?" And then we were looking at it through different lenses, and, and through the cultural lens, one of my students said, "Well, if someone is Muslim, like they're required to travel." to Mecca at least once like in their mm. lifetime like and that would be an, like travel is necessary then for someone who believes that faith and we, we were like yes and then someone then we were like oh in religious persecution people are escaping so like the kids are going to bring things up that's all and so then interesting if that brings, to me i'd love if, to if, hear this conversation if a kid kids. brings that up am i supposed to go oh my god we're, we're, we, we can't talk about those issues because yes. someone might be upset that that the word islam was said like, yes that's what you're supposed to do i apparently. mean give me a breath how do you stop a conversation I, I, whatever <sighs> you mean how, should kids actually hear another perspective and learn is that I what mean, we're not supposed to be doing in school now i mean yeah it's a suppo break. you're supposed to have those conversations that's course. what teaching is that's right that's right. All right, before we post okay. the stories, there's oh. also a funny tweet that I thought oh. was so great that Ooh. Representative Ana Escamani <gasps> put out yesterday. Our queen. In response to the don't say gay bill, which we have here in Florida, or is this going to pass? Oh. She said, I'm hearing that legislative offices are getting calls from people who are just saying the word gay <laughs> and then hanging up. Yeah. <laughs> And I wrote, come yes. through, prank callers. Yes. Come through. Yes, I saw that earlier too. Prank call these motherfuckers so all good. day. Well, I would just get a postcard that says gay on it and yeah. just send a thousand of yes. them oh to their God. offices. Just flood them with, just, their, with these gay postcards. I, 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 I who cares? I don't like, understand. give me a fucking break. I don't understand. Because, uh, because guess what? Prior to people stifling curriculum, mm -hmm. um, because you're going to talk about history, you're going to talk about different things. How do you, you know, sometimes like, if you're studying certain writers, like their sexuality is something that they yeah. end up writing about. By the way, like, these like, kids it's, it's, today, like, listen, when I my friends were teaching middle school, like, twenty years ago, they would tell me things that were happening in the middle school that, like, sexual things that were happening yes. to these kids, and I was like, God damn, fucking middle school, that was yes. crazy to me. Oh yes, it, that's how it is. The, 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 don't act. Like, we cannot sit here and pretend yes. like kids don't know what's going on. They know uh, what's going on. I mean, my son's ten, and he makes, he makes the some of the filthiest jokes I've ever heard in my yes. life and I'm like hey yo and then he goes but you say the f word all the time and I'm Ooh, like god damn this uh, yes. I can't what a, I, I don't have an <laughs> argument you're right I do but keep it to yourself you little pervert yeah, all right but prior to that but prior to that people you know uh, banning books and banning yeah. things that that might somehow uh have someone gay involved it, it does not turn your child gay because prior to those books being in school yeah. in the 50s and the 60s, people people were gay. Well, P.S. My daughter, people this is gay. so funny because when I was discussing this bill, when I was telling my daughter about this bill, so, you know what she said to me? So she said, you know, it's so weird. They don't want to, they want, they don't want children exposed to, to anything gay. She said, but we're exposed to straight cult, like life and culture yeah. all the time. And people are still, we still turn out yes. gay. So like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, that doesn't make These people kids, gay. Yeah, the kids are the kids are smarter than everyone. They are, right. and they don't care about this. We're so dumb. All right, all right, we gotta go. Are you ready? <laughs> because I am so fucking excited. <gasps> <about> the story, <gasps> and I wasn't sure. 
Uh, we should um, do it. And then I was like, you know what? It's going to be a nighttime recording. And, let's do it. You know, it's. It, I don't think it'll be very long, but it's something I'm very super stoked about because I'm oh. such a fan. And, um, and then when I told somebody about it, I'm like, did you know about this? And he said... I didn't know that that happened, and I was like, okay, I've got to do it. Yes! Okay, okay tell me. Tell I, me everything. And I can't open my notes because i got to look at you. Okay. <laughs> I don't want you to see it. Okay. I'm, I'm going to look here. I'm going to look at the camera. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Today. Okay. Or tonight. Ooh. I am covering, look at me, Howard Stern. What? Runs for governor. What? <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> yes. Now Howard listen, Stern. This is on the outskirts of a month podcast. I am, but you know listen, what? It's, it's political. It's well, political. one, it's political, and two, there are a lot of people yeah. who who Howard Stern rubs the wrong yeah. way. P.S. Dennis rubs the wrong he way. Does. So he does. Like, it, but you know. Dennis, who's our new fan, who I work with, my coworker, I told him today. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna see. He was what's on the podcast this week, and I told Ooh. him what I'm gonna cover, and he, he goes. I don't know Howard Stern, and I was like, "Holy wow. fuck!" Oh, that's right, because he did he's that whole ex he did that yeah. Exodus though. Yeah, he's on Sirius Satellite he's on, Radio and who's now. Listen- I mean, I'm sorry, but no, no, who's listen, listen, I did. Serious. I listened for a long time, but I, you know, I don't know yeah. anymore. Yeah, first right. time, long time. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a little. Let me just start with uh, how I fell into Howard Stern, so oh. or into the, my my love and fandom of Howard Stern. So in high school. I, yes. soft, I think it was about a sophomore, and he wrote a book called Private Parts. Yes, I know. First yes, okay. yes. Such yes. a great book. I, I read it, yeah. And yep, my yep. friend Jeanette had it, and she gave it to my friend Leanne, and Leanne then gave it to me, and I read it. And the three of us became super obsessed, where I was driving to school in the morning, and, and, had, and I had to I listened to yes. 105.9, right? Yes, 105.9 yeah. forever. Forever. And I would laugh and laugh, and it was so crazy. And then I went to college. I listened to him there. I started working. I started listening to, I listened to him every yes. morning. Um, I was listening to him on 9-11 when the, when oh, the building were Oh, me too, hit. me too. You were? Yes. Oh my God, that's crazy. Oh, I was on my way to work. Yes, I was yes. at work. Oh, that's so weird. Oh God, Tina. Yes. Um, and the guy on the building, who was it? It was one of their, their, their regulars and he was like giving them a play-by-play. Oh, Casey uh, was, oh no, it was, uh, the ho- it was Rob, it was, um, it was one of the producers yes, of the E-Show. Yes, yes, Doug, yes, Doug, yes, Doug, yes, Doug, yes, Doug, yes, Doug, yes. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tina, I didn't know you listened to Howard yes. Stern. I'm so fucking stoked yes. right now. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, Robin. Um, and Rob, oh, I know all Robin still remember, like, oh my oh, God, with, the, with, the, with the touched. Oh my God. Yes! <gasps> I know, I listened oh to Howard Stern, yes. But that was, that was on, that was on Sirius? No. Oh, I didn't I, listen to him on Sirius. Okay. I maybe listened. The Meat and Vegetables, you listen, you know about Robin and the Meat and Vegetables? I know about the, like, you know, her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she used to masturbate with me. Yeah, let's fuck it. Let's put it out okay, there. Like, we're not. We're on. We're on cucumbers. This, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Oh my god. Another thing <laughs> that I don't know if you know is that um, in 2002 there was a fight um, that was uh, a boxing match between Crazy Cabby, who worked at okay. the radio station, and Stuttering John, yes. who was a part of the show. Yes. So they put tickets up for sale, and I, of course I'm just I'm working. I'm like, oh, wait, tickets. I get a call from my, my best friend Leanne, and she says, "I just got two tickets no for fucking way! back boxing match." You I did said, not Bitch, go to this. Are you fucking kidding <gasps> wow. me? Okay, this is exciting. we fucking go up there with her brother-in-law, and my boyfriend at the time, and we fly up to Atlantic City. That's oh, we flew to New York. We drove this to Atlantic is, City. <laughs> I, I this is a, by the way, this is probably a Patreon episode, okay. but fuck it, we're throwing no, it. No, 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 this okay. is perfect. Okay. I, I cannot believe that so, you went to New York and saw this. Yeah, well, we, we, we was in Atlantic City, New Jersey, so we had to drive to Atlantic City. Yes. It was at Trump Taj Mahal. Oh, God. So we're staying at the Trump Taj Mahal where it's happening. These two knuckleheads went away, and Leanne and I are like, fuck you, we're sitting in the lobby. We sat in the lobby <gasps> and watched one fucking person from the no. show after the other walk in, including Howard fucking no. Stern. No! He's tall, he's so yes, tall. Yes, with that curly hair. Yes. So then later on in the day... Uh, the four of us were together, and Leanne said, we should try to find where the boxing match is. Like, let's just go see if we can walk around. Like, we're just walking around. Yeah. Like, there's fans everywhere. Like, we had shirts on, like Howard oh, Stern shirts on. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love this so much. We were obsessed. Okay. So, I think I made, yeah, I made shirts for us to wear there, like, that had sayings oh from the show. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I was, I was so, so into it. So cute. Yeah. So, anyway, we go down this long hallway. And we open, there's a door open and it's the venue where the boxing match is. The ring is set up. They're setting up chairs. And like, we just walked in. I love this. Nobody stopped us. And we're yes. like, holy shit. Right. So we're like taking pictures or whatever. And then Leanne's like, let's get the fuck out of here before they kick us out. No, so like no, we walked out, out and we're going down this hallway and this, there's nobody there. 
and coming toward us is Donald fucking Trump. Okay. Girl, yeah, okay, we have had this podcast. <laughs> How long have we had this podcast? If you don't tell me Donald Trump. that you are in the same hallway yeah. as this this, me? this disgusting me? human being? Donald Trump and five other people. No! Not only that. It's Wait, he's, he's with two people. No. He's, with, he's with a bodyguard, and I swear to Christ, it's probably Melania. I, it was a woman. I'd have to double check with Leanne and the four of us. So it's you know, they're walking, we're walking, and we stopped because Scott it was Scott, her brother-in-law, was like, "Holy!" He's like, "Oh, Mr. Trump!" Like, yeah, this is before, but, okay, Trump, this was is before Trump, Trump was Trump. Okay, Trump was Trump. he was a yes. he was a loudmouth like reality yeah. star. Like he, and he was Chris, always but, on a Howard Stern. Yes, yes, he was a big Howard Stern. Guy. And okay. he was always gross about women yes, he's and disgusting. everything. He's yes. always been disgusting. Yes, yes. But, but I can't believe yes. that we have been on this podcast. <laughs> Wait, I haven't been on this long. <laughs> And now I hear that here comes Donald Trump down the hallway. Yes, we talked yes. about this man. By the way, he is so tall. What? He's like six, 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 seven. He's, Donald Trump. He's fucking huge. Ew. I'm telling you, maybe six five, maybe six five. But he's so fucking tall. Ew. But is and he's head, like, like, does he have? And, like, and Scott's like, like, like big head. Yes, 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 yes. He's, he's exactly Everything, what he would think ew. he looks like. Is what he looks like. And I, of course, I don't. I don't really care about yeah. Donald Trump, so I was like, Wait, whatever. Did he have like the apprentice at this time? Yes, I think all that was happening. Okay. Yeah. So it's him, I think Melania, the bodyguard, and Scott's like, oh my gosh, Mr. Trump, can we have a picture? So Leanne and, and Scott had got a picture with, with Donald Trump. I, I was, you know, and then he's like, he was very nice. He was like, oh, good to see you. He was going to the venue, check out how everything's going. And then we walked out, that was it. But we saw, we met Baba Booey and all the way. My Baba fucking Bob Boo. Yeah, Bob Boo. Bob Boo. We were leaving to go back to New York because we stayed. We went back to New York and stayed a night in New York before we left. And we were walking to the garage, and Bob Boo was by himself, oh walking God. toward us. And we're like, "Holy shit! This is like I, I, I don't even know what to say. Yeah, I, I, listen, I'm flabbergasted. Yeah, the end. <laughs> I'm done with my story. That's the end. <laughs> Sorry. So anyway, that's just to tell you that I'm a huge Howard Stern fan, and I was a, have always been a huge Howard Stern fan. And the thing that I love about Howard the most, and I I was mentioning this to somebody earlier today, is that you know you know besides the strippers and the fucking yes. fart jokes and all the masturbation, yeah, yeah, the crude, all that I shit, mean, whatever. He's crude as crude can be. He's very very smart. I think he's he's a genius. He is smart. Yeah, and, he's smart, and he's he always was challenging that First Amendment, and I really yeah. think that he pushed that forward for broadcasters yes. and, and people with entertainment. And, and I think he's a genius in that way. And, and that movie, when he did the movie Private oh, Parts, it is, a movie. Good, it is a such a great good movie. movie. Such a great fucking movie. I mean, because, like, it's a shtick. Like, you know, like, this is his, he, yeah. there's a persona there. Yeah. Um, but behind this persona, like, that's the thing. Like, people reacted to that. And the movie really played, and the book yes, really so plays that up. And, like, seeing how he just pushes and pushes and pushes. And yeah. I know feminists all over the world are like, what the hell's wrong with the matter. two of you? No. But it's he is so smart. He's so fucking smart. And he calls people out. He I, does. I, okay, I, I so I'm glad called, you said I that. I wish he would have called Trump out a little That's bit my, more. Okay, thank and you. And he did a little too late. Yeah. I, I don't think he realized. Yeah. I don't think he realized that this was going to happen. I, I agree. And so when I, I my, for, for Christmas one year, he was going over to Sirius and to satellite radio. And yes. for Christmas, my friend Leanne got me the, the radio and got me a subscription for a year. And then I renewed it every year because I, I was into the yes. show as it was on Sirius. I think I had like a six month free, you know, I got yeah. a car and it was for free six yeah. months. And then after that, I was like, I'm not paying for And this. it was great. It was very good. It just, but the it show, wasn't the same. The show has shifted. It's not really about like the smut stuff anymore, which yeah. is fine with me. Um, well, he married but he that, did, uh, he, uh, you know, don't, but get, yeah. don't get me started on Beth. And then, oh, uh, oh. yeah, I, I'm not a fan. So, but, oh. but well, Howard, whatever, Howard whatever, Stern whatever. whatever. I think he, I think he went a little soft, but it's because also he got older, which I think yes. is why I was also okay with all the smut stuff going away yeah. because I was getting older, Yeah. but he does incredible fucking interviews and he's yes. so honest. And, and I feel like I try to do that here. Like, I think that I, you know, he always talked about using an honest voice. You can't hide who you are. Yes. You have to be who you are. And I think that doing that here on the podcast makes this podcast good. Yes. I think that both of us do that. Yes. We're honest about our lives and, and things when, that are happening And when on, people happening here. want to say, oh, it's, you know, too much of this, too much of that. Look, you know what? Then don't listen. Yeah. And I, you know, I, it's funny that you say that. So the thing that I often think about that is connected to private parts, and there's this um, wonderful scene where, like, they want to kick him off of, like, WNBC. Yes. And, um... <laughs> I, I cannot believe... First of all, I know that I 
didn't tell you about Trump, but I can't believe I didn't know you were Howard Stern. Oh. I'm like, this is disturbing oh. me. I'm oh. disturbed that I didn't know that. Oh, well. So, um, secrets. Yes. I'm sorry. Co-host secrets. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, on there, they're like, we got to get rid of him. But then they're like, oh my God, like the, the people, ratings, the ratings. Yes. And they're like, oh, the, the people who love him, well, I want to see what he says next. And the people that hate him, yes. I want to see what he says yes, next. Yes, and yes. I always think about that when, when I hear from some people that are like, oh my God, it's, it's, you know, like it's too much of this or not enough or the politics. And it's like, that's what it is. And it, you either like it or you don't like it. Yeah. The end, because there's people that I think who don't like it will still listen. Yeah. I think so. They, you know, but also, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I just, I stopped listening to Howard. I didn't renew my subscription this last time. I actually canceled it. And I haven't listened since like yeah, I probably listened, 2002. I haven't like, listened or, in a good three years. I, you know, because when Trump got elected and even during that, that campaign, I was very, very disappointed. And I think that he played this, this middle ground because he wanted to get him on the show. Like he thought yeah. if he gets elected, I could have the president of the United States on the show. And the fact of the matter is he did not use his voice in what I believe he could have and yes. how he really felt and I don't know and there's people on the show who called him out for it and they were like yeah lamp you know blasted uh Jason one of the producers on the show was like I don't think that you're saying the things how you really feel and he you know he blew him up on the air about it and that was like one of the last times I listened because I was yeah. like I don't really care about this anymore I don't yeah. I can't do it but I will always have a huge spot in my heart for Howard Stern I mean my god the man has made me laugh so fucking Howard Stern much. why don't you come on Loma? Yeah, that's what Dennis said to me today. He goes, oh, are you going to have him on the podcast? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to have Howard Stern on the podcast. Yeah, sure. I mean, but why not? Sure. Why not? Yeah, he'll be on next week. I mean, All right. we'll just reach out to Baba Booey. You know him personally. Yeah, met him. Got a picture. I'll send him the picture. Like, remember me from fucking 20, uh, 20 years ago. 20 years ago. In, in the, in the uh, hallway. Yeah. All right. Oh so God. let's get into this. Okay. So I'm going to talk about his a little bit of his early life and his work. Oh. Because really, the governor the running for governor was this little blip. But I also thought, it, like... You know, it kind of feeds into why I think he does it. But all right. Okay. So Howard Allen Stern oh. was born January 12th, 1954, the second of child of Ben and Ray Stern, who I, I love the yes. impersonation oh of my God, it's bad. in the Jackson Heights neighborhood of Queens in New York City. His father worked as a radio engineer at WHOM in Manhattan, and it was a co-owner and operator at Aura Recording Inc., a Manhattan recording studio where cartoons and commercials were cut. In 1955, the family moved to Roosevelt, New York, on Long Island, where Stern attended Washington Rose Elementary School, followed by Roosevelt Junior High, Senior High School. Um, as a kid, he took five years of piano lessons and took an interest in marionettes, using them to entertain his friends with I explicit love, shows. I so he would do dirty this. things with the it fucking puppets. It just was puppets. in his, I mean, this is yeah. who he is. <laughs> he formed a band with two school friends called The Electric Comic Book, and oh he was on vocals and keyboards. No. And he always wished to be on the radio since the age of five. And a lot of times on the show, he would talk about, he really, because his in dad was into radio. Yeah. Like, he would talk yeah. about being in the basement, right? Like, trying to do something with Yeah, but he would do it all of this because he really wanted his dad's attention. His dad was, like, loved the radio guys, worked in radio, yeah. and he was like, I want to be on radio, too, Aww. so that my dad pays attention Aww. to me. Um, he is an infrequent, infrequent listener in his youth uh, to the radio, but names to, of talk personalities like Bob Grant and Brad Crandall were his early influences. And his father set up a microphone, tape machine, and turntable in the basement of his home, which Stern used to record his make-believe radio shows, incorporating different characters and pre-recorded prank calls, sketches, and commercials. Oh, I love this. I know. He made several visits to his father's recording studio and witnessed some of the great voice guys uh, that he worked with, including Don Adams, Larry Storch, and voice, uh, who voiced Tennessee Tuxedo and his tales, which began his desire to be on the air and to do a show rather than play records, right? Okay. So in the late 1960s, Roosevelt became a predominantly black area, and Stern remembered just, quote, a handful of white kids, end quote, had remained in high school and repeated instances of bullying from the black students. Um, in June 1969, that's a big part of his show. He talks yes. about this all the time. Uh, in June 1969, the family moved to new, nearby Rockville Center, and Stern, at age 15, transferred to Southside High School, where he became a, quote, total introvert. Um, he graduated from the high school in 1972, and his, his yearbook lists Stern's sole student activity as a membership of the Key Club. <laughs> <laughs> he talks a lot on the show about being high a lot in yeah. high school. Okay, so in 1972, Stern pursued a communications degree at Boston University, but his average high school grades caused him to spend the first two years in, his, in its College of Basic Studies, 
And then his second year, he started working at the campus radio station, WTVU, where he played records, read the news, and hosted interview, pro interview programs. Nice. In 1974, he gained admission to the University School of Public Communications. He then studied for a diploma at the Radio Engineering Institute of Electronics in Fredericks Fredericksburg, Virginia in July 1975, which earned him a first-class radio telephone operator license, which apparently is a big deal because he talks about it all the time that not a lot of radio people have this. So with the license, Stern landed his first professional radio job at WNTN in Newton, Massachusetts from August to December of 1975 doing air shifts, newscasting, and production work. And for the first five months, he taught students basics electronics in oh. preparation for their own FCC um, Oh, I didn't know that exams. he taught kids. Yeah, I guess probably yeah. for extra money, right? Yeah. Okay, so he had a long and successful career in radio known as a shock jock. Um, he started out in 1979 at WCCC in Hartford, Connecticut, and moved from station to station, uh, like most radio DJs do. They move all over the country, right? Yeah. Um, in March 1981, he landed a job at WWDC in Washington, D.C., and made a decision to be more honest and bold in his on-air style, right? Like, this was where <clears throat> he had been doing the same old, same old thing that you do yes. on radio station, and he went to D.C., and he's like, I've got to change the way that I'm doing right. this. I've got to be more... I get to make crude jokes, funny, like just be more yes. out there. Like it yes. can't be so reserved. And, and this is also... Do you, do you wonder... I've thought about this of Howard Stern. Like, I don't think Howard Stern could do what he did then now. Yeah. He, he it, it wouldn't happen. Right. Right. Because, well, we'll get to that part later yeah. on in here, but... A lot of what he did that he pushed it where people were able to do those things. And then this one instance of something happened at a Super Bowl, the FCC went goes yes. fucking nuts and he gets fined like millions and yes. millions of dollars, yes. which is really kind of what ultimately led him to leave terrestrial right. radio right. and go to satellite but radio and like, be uncensored. But even I think like so like socially, like with, with Yes. That that there would be I think a lot of Oh, like the cancel culture stuff. Yeah. 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 I, I think you're right. So um, he was paired up with Robin Quivers, uh, oh, who delivered I love the Robin. news, and they became an incredible team, which still that still work together today. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's years. They're like, oh my <gasps> it's gonna be like me and you. That's our bitch. Oh! Okay. <laughs> I'll be Robin. I got the tits for it. Oh, my. <laughs> you can be Howard. You have the I hair. Can, I, I have the Howard hair. And yes. you just make it more curly. We should do that for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> So within a few months, because of this new style, like it was unheard of. People had never heard a show like yes. that before. His show quickly becomes number two in D.C., which was a big deal. And it's caught the, the eye of radio producers in NBC uh, in New York City, which was Howard's dream job. Yes. He always wanted to go to New York. Um, and he signed with, the, with them and started working for NBC in 1982. But they didn't really listen to his show. They looked at his ratings. Right? Yes. And so they weren't really ready for like what he was doing. Ooh. And so he constantly butted heads with the executives there and they tried to put restraints on him. And of course he's eventually fired. Uh, but before he left, he started, he hired an agent who he still has today, Don Buckwald and Don Buckwald, got him booked on like national TV shows. He made appearances on David Letterman. And they were both go. on NBC and they would both get on the air and complain about NBC on an NBC <laughs> TV show, right? I love and that. And he would talk shit about the radio executives Good. and David Letterman would laugh and talk shit about the TV executives at NBC. And it was just And what really are they going to do? They're yeah, making nothing. money. At yeah. the end of the day, they still want to collect that check. That's right. He was featured in People Magazine. So like he's starting to get people who know who he is. Yeah. And, okay. But NBC, of course, NBC was furious because he was doing these crazy stunts on the air and the rating, but the ratings were through the roof, right? So, yeah. like, they didn't, they had no, how do you rein it in? They couldn't control him. Yeah. Of course, they hired Pig Virus. You know, oh my Pig God. Virus. <laughs> <laughs> So on September 30th, 1985, uh, Stern and everyone on his show was fired for what NBC management termed, quote, conceptual differences regarding the show. Program director John Hayes explained, quote, over the course of time, we made a very conscious effort to make Stern aware that certain elements of this program should be changed. I don't think it's appropriate boring. to say what those, were, those specifics <laughs> were, end quote. So, uh, of course, within months, uh, Stern and everyone on his staff was picked up by WXRK in New York. Um, and they worked for the station for the next 20 years. Wow. And he signed a contract with Sirius XM Radio, a satellite radio um, station, for $500 million in wow. 2005. Wow. And he's still there on the air today. Wow. So he's been on the air for 
a very, yeah. very long time. I put in here shock jock antics. So if you're not familiar with Howard Stern, a lot of what he would do is like he'd have strippers on. Yes. He'd ask a celebrities very sexually explicit questions. Yes. He would talk about his sex life, his masturbation. He'd talk about porn. Yes. He would talk. I mean, he would, would call even, in. He would he'd ask yell like, at everybody. He would ask like the most you know beautiful model yeah. like. You know, yeah. give them a lie detector test yeah. and ask them, like, if they farted yesterday. Yeah. Or, you know, like, yeah. things like that. Like, or, that like, would... do you fuck on your period? Yeah. Like, something that's like, just kind of gross, gross and, and, like, uh, crazy. But, but he was very funny and he had a great cast of characters around him. Like, oh my from my, God. from the love of that I have for Artie Lang, I cannot even tell you. Oh, Artie Lang. I just absolutely adore him. So, um, you'd have to really go back and look. Like, he had television shows and things like that, but he's just not but, doing those yeah. things anymore. And his television, I think he tried, he had, like, a, a nighttime talk yeah. show. It yes. just didn't work. He had a cable TV show. Yeah. I think it was, I think I read that it had, like, 69 episodes, and then he had the E! show, yes. which was a big deal. Like, these were all things that were happening in the But 90s. the radio show was, like, his thing. Yeah. And you he know. was so fucking good at it. Yes. I mean, oh, my God. I, the, the, I can't even tell you. I just, so much joy in my life out of this show. I'm flying to fucking Atlantic City, all right? I mean, I can't take it. So, what happens? So, let's get into the politics of like what yes. happened about Stern and politics. So, during his radio show on March 22nd, 1994, Stern announced his candidacy for governor of New York, New York under the Libertarian Party ticket, challenging Mario Cuomo for re-election. And he was the, by the way, 40 years old at the time, Howard Stern. Wow. 40 when he did this. Wow. I can't even believe you know what's he was funny? only 40. I, when I, you know what's funny is I always, because I was younger, yeah. listening to him at that time, Me too. he seemed so much older. That's what I was thinking. Because I remember when this happened. Yeah. Like This was around the time I started listening to him. 94, I would have been a sophomore in high school. This was around the time. Wow. I, I remember when this happened, when he did this. Yeah. But I was, what, 16? Yeah. But I can't believe he was only 40. That's We're older than what yeah. he was when he did that. Yeah. Think about how much shit he went through the fights yes. to just be able to say what he wanted to say on the air. Yeah. No it's matter wild. how gross it is. Right. And that was one of the things that, you know, I, I forgot what it, I forgot what, in what context, I don't know if it was the movie or a book, but somebody was pushing back and saying he was disgusting and he's like, I'm fighting for all of us. Right. Like I'm being fined millions of dollars by so the SEC to be able to talk. Yay. Like, yeah. this is not okay. We should all be concerned that the government is trying to shut down what the fuck we're saying. Like. And whether you like it or you don't like right. it, it's not really the fucking point. Right. You know what I mean? Mm. Which is amazing. I mean, you know, that's why I really love them. <laughs> anyway, here's a fucking side note that I, I found that I thought you would absolutely <gasps> love. So as he's, you know, ramping up, running for governor, he's talking about on the show all the time. He's got strippers going to press conferences with him. Like, you know, I remember, I remember the, like the red, white, and blue. Yes. Like, yes. He's going on talk shows, whatever. Oh so he goes God. on Larry King. Oh, God. Okay. And he plays a tape. Of Senator Bob Packwood. Oh. Okay. Oh. Wow. We Tina covered Bob Packwood yes. in episode fifty-eight of the Muck. You have to go listen to it. I think I have a stroke in the yeah. end of that episode. <laughs> like I am out of my fucking mind. Yeah. My head explodes. Okay. But he. This was all happening at the time he starts to run. Oh. I think was, well, ninety-four. I think that's right. I, think I, was, I don't remember the time. I don't either. But it, 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 whether it was right then or like right or before right. then. So. He plays a tape of Senator Bob Packwood's confession to Larry King, like on the air. Then uh, he talks about how, you know, this guy's been suspended and all this stuff. And he, he's a senator from Oregon. Yeah. And he said, he, you know, the, the, basically in the recording, Bob Packwood said he has no memory whatsoever, uh, or, or no memory whatever, of, of how many women that have accused him of sexual harassment because there were so many. Yeah. And then Stern said, and uh, and what about me running for governor? Like, oh, that's not okay? Like, this guy was in yeah. the office and like, Ooh, use that. Hey. Use that. Look at you, Howard yeah. Stern. Yeah. He's but, like, oh, this guy's harassing women. Yeah. I just want to run for governor because I say some filthy things on the air. Like, right. that's not okay? Give me a break. I love but yeah, because the morality pro police. Yeah. Yeah. We're always after him. Oh my God. It's it's just so good. I just love that Bob Packwood connection. I knew wow. that you would fucking love it, right? Good for him. Yeah. So he had, really when he ran, he said, look, there's three things I want to do. It's the three things he would complain about all the time. So he wanted to reinstate the death penalty. And, and now, at this time, he is not a fan of the death penalty. He's actually against the death penalty. But at the time, New York did not have the death penalty. He wanted them to, to reinstate it. Okay. Um, 
he wanted to remove highway tolls to improve traffic flow because okay. everybody everything yeah, was already backed up. Down. Yes. Okay. And he wanted to limit the road work to graveyard shifts shift hours. So like oh. traffic was always slow. He couldn't get out right. to the house or whatever. Like right. these are things that were bothering him. Yeah. Personally. And he said, I need to fix these things so that I can have a better but I, life. I'm sure other people well, and they ha that happens here. Like a lot of the time yeah. like when our road work is done, it's done yes. in those in those very hours. early hours yes. of or late early morning hours. Right, when there's not a lot of people on yeah, the road. Yeah. yeah. So um so he announced that those were his three goals and once they were accomplished he would resign and pass the governorship to his lieutenant. So he's like, Let me get in there, I'm gonna oh. do these three things and then peace I'm out, right? <laughs> So Hank Morris. I mean, um, how? And I mean, what politician does that? I, I believe he would do it too. I think he would do it. Like who? Um, I know. So I Hank, really don't want to be here. Yeah. I just I can't stand the drive. Yeah. Help me out. Yeah. And Let then me just I, fix I, I promise. I promise. I'll give it to somebody. Yeah. <laughs> so Hank oh, Morris, so um, who was a Democratic political consultant during the, that time, said, "Quote: He's much more serious than at least nine out of the ten Republican <laughs> candidates, and maybe oh. all ten. Woo. It is a real a real wild card, and with." politics being so unhinged the way modern politics is who knows what can happen i quote. mean yeah could win who, who, who knows? knows the libertarian liber the libertarian uh, party's leader at the time ludwig vogel said quote he's bringing us shock politics <laughs> this is the most exciting thing that has happened in all my years wow. on the libertarian party end hey. quote, which i love right hey. i love it so, um, you know, that's the right thing to do. You yeah. know, you imagine a party's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. They're like, please, yeah, come check out the need. Libertarian Party, right? We need some attention. Yeah, <laughs> so at the party's nomination convention on April 23rd, Stern won the required two-thirds majority vote wow. to get on the first ballot, receiving 287 of the 381 hey. voters, votes cast. Um, and of course, he was campaigning on his show daily, and it was relentless, but, you know, it was a big deal. Um, so to place his name on the final ballot, Stern was obliged to state his home address and complete a financial disclosure form under the Ethics in Government yeah. Act. Yeah. And he applied for an injunction mm -hmm. um, as he wished to avoid stating his income and the request was denied by a judge on August 2nd. Um, and so then Show he, us the money, Stern. Yeah. So then Show he, us the money. Yeah. So then he withdrew his candidacy in an on-air uh, press conference two days later saying, quote, I spend 25, 25 hours a week telling you all the most intimate details of my life. One fact I've never revealed is how much I make and how much money I have. It's none of your business, right. end quote. And I guess revealing the home address because he is such a shock Celeb jock. Yeah. And, and, he's and there's a lot of, and, well, and there's people that just don't like him. Yeah. I can imagine that that or would crazy give, that would, that would, yeah, that's what I mean. That yeah. would give somebody pause. Yeah. So um, in the gubernatorial election on November 8th, Cuomo was defeated by George Pataki, who Stern ended up backing. Um, and in that August 1995, Pataki signed a bill that limited construction on state oh, roads to night oh, hours in, hey. New York City, in New York City and Long Island, <laughs> which was named the... Howard Stern bill in honor of Stern originally proposing the plan. Wow, and, uh, I didn't know that he has yeah. a bill named after him. He does. Him. Yeah. Look at Howard Stern. How about that? I love that story. Do you love yes. it? Oh my God! First of all, wow. I know, of course you're a Howard Stern. Fan. You're cool as <laughs> fuck. Look how cool you are. Look how cool you are. Woo! I love this. How oh does your husband God. feel about Howard Stern? Oh yeah, he's a Stern fan too. God damn it. This is what we should yes. be talking about this all yes. these years. Who knew? God damn it. <laughs> Love it. Well, I'm about to bring everything down. I'm oh, sorry. Golly. I'm so sorry, everyone. Uh, just leave it to me to well, before we, <laughs> set me downer. Before we go on, I just want to say, uh, Baba Booey! Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Oh, my God. It, Manny and I always used to do, um, oh, my God, uh, uh, Beetlejuice. Oh, oh Beetlejuice! Beetle God, oh my God, best. I loved Beetlejuice. I also so loved Eric much. the Actor. Oh my God, the best! <laughs> Eric the Actor was the best. Eric and oh, Beetlejuice and Hank the Angry Drunken oh Dwarf my God. is like hero status oh to me. God. I was so There's fucking so... sad when he died. I was oh. so sad. I know, because he was like a musical band, like knew all these yeah. musical bands and acts. He was like a genius. Oh. All right. Well, okay. guess what? I'm putting pictures of all of them in our notes. <gasps> A Yay. picture of Hank in there with a Sprite bottle. Oh, God okay. bless you, Howard Stern. God bless. Oh my God. Let's go. And come on, little muck. Come on, little muck. Come on, little muck. Oh, come on, little muck. Oh. We'll talk about masturbation. Uh, maybe I don't know. You know, yeah, we you will. Know. We'll do it. We'll do it. Oh. We'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we ready? Yes. <laughs> 
All right, today, mm -hmm. or tonight, as yeah. you said, I'm going to tell you the story of the murder Oy. of civil rights activist Cheney Goodman and Schwerner. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I'm yeah. so, I know I'm bringing the house down in a bad way. I'm That's sorry. all right. Let's go. We need, right. we need to have it in here. We got to do it. All right. So in June 1964, three civil rights activists make their way to investigate a firebomb church in Mississippi. Mm. But when no one hears from them for days, everyone fears the worst. So like last week, our story takes place in Mississippi and... I feel like if any place needs to cleanse itself mm. um, and needs, you know, a bonfire of sage, yeah. it's Mississippi. That helicopter uh, flying I just, over It really sage. does. Yeah. Um, and I also want to note that the time period that this is taking place is the summer of 1964, which was also known as Freedom Summer. Mm. And the plan that summer was to register as many blacks from the South as possible. So okay. this was, like, the plan. And according to uh, the FBI article on this case... Freedom Summer was a response to the Klan's fear and intimidation tactics being used to suppress the vote and to prevent voter registration. So here we are again, right? They're afraid of losing power. The same thing as last week's story, the same thing that we're seeing today mm. is intimidation, intimidation, intimidation. Mm. And as we've heard our elected speak on this, you know, people need to realize what's going on here, right? Why are all these new voter registration bills popping up everywhere? Like this, it's the same thing that was happening then, but yeah. in a different way. Like they were trying to stop access to voter education, access to voting. And we're seeing the same thing, but in this different way. They're, they found yeah. a different way, but yeah. it's still the same thing. But also like, we don't need to, it's not broken. It's right. It's broken. It's been right. fixed. We fixed it all those years right. ago. Why are you coming back? Right. There's other problems. There are new problems. Right. That you but should they be don't, they on. don't, they don't care about uh, that. COVID, you know, I don't know. Maybe yeah. We could talk about that. But like, oh, so at the time, um, the folks who are, are part of this Freedom Summer, they're trying to help disenfranchise people get registered to vote. Mm -hmm. And people in this area of the country in Mississippi had been disenfranchised since 1890. So oh it's like gosh. 1964. And since 1890, it has been just this, again, an orchestrated effort to keep people oppressed, oppressed, oppressed. So there were certain places that they were like, we need to get into these pockets of Mississippi. We need to reach the black people in these areas of Mississippi. Mm. All right, so I'm going to give you a very brief ba background into each of these men, and then we'll move into what happened. So James Cheney, um, he was a young black man born in 1943, and according to the James Earl Cheney Foundation, he was born in a poor area of Mississippi known as Meridian, he earned his education at a local Catholic school until about ninth grade, and he even served as an altar boy. Oh. Um, the site further notes that in high school, Cheney became captain of the football team and the track teams, demonstrating his leadership from a very young age. And in high school, he began to participate in political discourse, and he became involved in local civil rights activism and joined the NAACP at 15 years old. And he and other students at the school started wearing NAACP badges. Oh. Um, and the, but the principal mm. threatened him and the others with suspension because he feared repercussions from the all-white school board. And according to the site, there was a growing fear about the, quote, political consciousness raising of black students. Oh, yeah, we can't have that. God I forbid. Mean, God forbid. So in 1962... When he was 19, Cheney participated in the Freedom Rides, and at mm. one point, his dad took him away from one of the bus stations where segregationists had shown up to incite violence and fear, and he yelled at him for being too politically adventurous, oh, which boy. I get because of it's course. his dad, yes. and he's afraid for his yes, son's life, of course. and My he's God. a young kid, and yes. it would be incredibly scary for a parent oh, to be a. dealing with oh, that. Oh, my God. Um, but Cheney was not to be deterred, and he continued his activism. Oh, the next year... In 1963, Cheney joined the Congress for Racial Equality, or CORE. Mm. And according to the MLK Institute, CORE began in 1942 by an interracial group of college students. They were known for their nonviolence, um, you know, civil disobedience. Yet, even though it was nonviolent, it was still direct action in the struggle for civil civil rights mm -hmm. and they would turn to things like sit-ins boycotts um they organized the 1961 freedom rides and they there was a big focus on voter registration Great. this is like the this organization yes um and the 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 organization was um 
like an integrated group. It was whites and mm -hmm. blacks and, and working together. Um, but Cheney, um, through, so even though Kaur like focused on nonviolence, his work again was really focused on voter registration, like through this organization. Mm -hmm. And in 1963, he worked to get voter registration programs in and around the area of Meridian, Mississippi, oh where he was from, which was also known as Klan territory. So, oh, God. you know, again, this is just like we had with uh, Medgar Evers. You know, it's it's putting a target on people's back when they are trying to make change in an area where there's this Klan stronghold. All right, so our next um, gentleman is Goodman. And according to biography, Goodman was born in 1943. He attended schools in New York City, and he got interested in activism at an early age. Um, he's a young, white, uh, Jewish boy. Um, he was, um, when he was in high school, he joined the Youth March for Integrated Schools. While a student at Queens College, Goodman joined the 1963 March on Washington. Mm. He participated in protests at the World's Fair and at uh, a New York Woolsworth. Wow. In the summer of 1964, he joined Corps as a volunteer to help register black voters in Mississippi. Upon arriving in Mississippi, he wrote to his parents and stated that the town was, quote, uh, wonderful and, quote, our reception was very good. You know that that's not true, right? Like, he's trying to keep his parents yes, calm. Yes, yes. He's just telling them something to keep them from coming down and getting them. Yes. And then Michael Schwerner, he was also a young white Jewish boy. Um, he was born in 1939, and he was raised in New York. He went to good schools. He went to Michigan State University, followed by Cornell. Wow. Uh, after college, he was hired by CORE as a field worker and when he was just 24 years old. According to the Public University of Kansas Law School, it was after watching the Birmingham riots of 1963 that led Schwerner to become committed to the fight for civil rights. And when he applied to Corps, he requested to be posted in the South. Wow. Schwerner had this to say, quote, I have an emotional need to offer my services in the South. And he also noted that Mississippi was the divisive battleground for America. Mm. Um, and he said, uh, nowhere in the world is the idea of white supremacy more firmly entrenched or more cancerous than in Mississippi. Wow. Yeah. And he's like, I got to be there to help. Jesus. I know. So Schwermer. Uh, I mean, sorry. at this time, nobody was doing things yes. like this. I mean, this is incredible that yes. this young person wanted to do that. <sighs> So uh, Schwerner went in ready to make changes, which like this, again, like Medgar Evers, um, this caught the attention of the Klan. And one of the first things that got their attention was when Schwerner organized a boycott of a local store until the store hired a black man. So this store served primarily black customers mm. and Schwerner and others felt that blacks should be represented in this company and they should be permitted to apply and get a job at this place. Yeah. And he helped make that happen through wow. the boycotting. And according to the FBI website, the Klan really had it out for um, Schwerner. He was known, again, like um, uh, Cheney uh, and Goodman uh, for the voter registration efforts. Like, it, it all comes down to this voter registration. Yeah. It all comes down to they don't want people to have this power because your vote, it's a very powerful thing. Yeah. It's a, it's and, the great and, equalizer, right? Yes. Like uh, what um, uh, Desmond Mead said yes. to us: that voting booth makes you as equal as anybody yes. else who's around. Yes, you. and that's the thing that that I think he may have said there too. Like we have to wonder why are they going after this so hard? Still, why yeah. are they going after this so hard? <laughs> uh, that's, so, I think that that's the seed. Yeah, that's got to be the one thing. You yeah. know what I mean that we can focus on. Yes. That, like, so another thing he did, um, this is uh, Schwerner, was he approached a local black church, Mount Zion Church, and he asked if it could be the site for a freedom school. Mm. And that was essentially about training folks in voter registration and presenting voter education. And this is stuff that we talk about, that we need to educate voters. And so to use a local church and a place in the community to have a space that is safe mm -hmm. for people in the community to come to. And the church was like, yeah, sure, like, let's do it. They're on board. Nice. And Schwerner... Um, then in the middle of this takes off to Ohio for training regarding Freedom Summer. And while he's gone, the Klan is looking for him. Oh my and God. so they go to the church because, um, oh. as history reported, the imperial wizard of the Klan, this guy Sam Bowers, Ugh. he put the word out to have Schwerner eliminated. And according Jesus. to the FBI site, they don't find him because he's in Ohio for that training. Oh. So they decide instead to burn the church to the ground and beat up the folks that are going to attend church that day. That's nice. Yeah. 
So that's what they do. Nice. So I just, it's, 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 I want to say it's unbelievable, but I, I don't understand like the level of hate that someone can have in their heart. I, I don't understand. Like, I just don't understand it. And I, it's the, the level that turns to violence. The violence. The, the violence. violence. Like people are going to church, they're minding their own, like, and you're going to go there, you're looking for someone else and then, okay, well, we'll just harm these other people. They want to register people to vote, so they should be mar- women put right. a hit out on them. Yeah. Okay. So, the major incident. So, according to the Zinn Education Project, on June 21st, 1964, Schwerner was back in town, and he had James Cheney and Andrew Goodman with him. And so, they all, you know, again, they're all part of, like, this Freedom Summer, and so these guys were asked to, hey, come down to Mississippi, and Schwerner's part of, like, the Mississippi group, and so now they're there together. Good. And um, he wanted to head into Neshoba County, Mississippi to check out the ruins of the church because he heard, like, hey, this church burned down. He knows that he was setting up the voter, oh you know. God. So he's like, let me, you yeah. know, and he feels responsible. Responsible. So he wants to go see. Oh. So they head over to check out the church to investigate, and then they disappear. Oh, my God. So gone, right? No one can find a trace of them. Oh, my God, Tina. And according to the Public University of Kansas Law School page, when the men were heading back to Meridian, a deputy named Cecil Price pulled their blue core station wagon over. The FBI FBI page offers more details, noting that the deputy pulled them over for speeding. They probably weren't speeding, but they listen. They're co- they're not breaking a single fucking law. <sighs> no, they're law. not doing. They're anything. not doing that. They're gonna walk. They're gonna go as slow as possible. Yes. So they don't so, get pulled over. Somewhat later, um, they're released around 10:30 p.m. that night, and this is after being held for seven hours. Well, they seven hours. You know why? They let them go at that late at night, so it's dark. Yes. And they were gathering the troops, Correct. right? Like they're getting everybody, getting Correct. the word out. Yes. Oh, this this N word is are, back in town. Yes. Oh, the guy that we and, put this hit out on the Imperial Wizards, like well, get no, that the, guy. The, he was the Jewish kid. Just oh, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, but oh. Cheney was with him, and the okay, other two Yes, but still, yeah. They know that this there's a uh, there's two Jewish boys and a and a, and a young black man with them, so yes. they know. So according to the FBI, the Klan follows them as part of a, like you said, a pre-planned attack. Yeah. So they're followed, and again, they're never heard from again. The next day, the Justice Department and then Attorney General Bobby Kennedy asked the FBI to get involved because does something doesn't seem right. Like they people know they went to go see this church, and now these guys didn't come back. We don't know where they are. And one thing that I read that I was like. It was just so disgusting. Was a segregationist senator at the time. His name was Jim Eastland. Mm -hmm. He told LBJ, um, Lyndon B. Johnson, then president, that this was probably some kind of civil rights publicity stunt. (gasps) This sounds familiar. This sounds familiar. Publicity stunt. That's what this is. Holy cow! Yes, because surely a young black man and two Jewish men are in no danger in the middle of Klan country in Mississippi, right? So the day after that, so now we're in June 23rd. You know what the, I, the most disgusting part is? Playing dumb. Yeah. You fucking know. Oh, no, they know. You know. And that guy knows her. that they're fucking murdered. Yeah. And he's going to sit there and play dumb and yeah. try to shift the blame. Yeah. On, 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 on these, people. Uh, That's fucking incredible. At least have the courage to say that you're a fucking racist yes. and an anti-Semite and that you've murdered these fucking people. Yeah, no. Like, what the fuck? They can't do it. So now the day after, it's June 23rd. And um, the day after that, so June 21st, they're gone. The, t- the 22nd, uh, they're asking for help. And now the 23rd, investigators find the Blue Corps station wagon. Oh, my God. But it's burnt out. And there's nothing left. There's no bodies. But, of course, they're fearing the worst. And this is where the case gets its name. And there was an, a movie back in the day. It was called Mississippi Burning. Yes. And this is where they got the name of, uh, you know, how they named their cases. And it was mm-hmm. called Miss Burn, Mississippi Burning. So for weeks, they search. The National Guard gets called in. Wow. Nothing. Wow. Johnson uh, called for a field office to be set up so they can continue searching. An anonymous tip comes in claiming to know where the bodies are, and it proves to be reliable. Oh, fuck. So on August 4th, 1964, their bodies were found in a dam site about six weeks after they went missing. Oh, my God. The men had been shot, and then their bodies were burned together in the dam site. And a Ferris State University article notes that while the two white Jewish men were shot, Cheney was actually beaten and tortured before he was killed. 
So it, this is it's, incredible. It's, it's, it's so what the fuck? It's so terrible. So from there, the FBI arrests the deputy sheriff, Cecil Price, the sheriff, Lawrence Rainey, and more than a dozen Klansmen, one included a Baptist preacher named Edgar Ray Killen. And I feel like the name is just apropos for, you know, oh all of this. So they all got arrested. They get arrested. The sheriff, so, the sheriff too. The sheriff, the, yeah, because they planned. They were part of they it. They planned yeah, it. Yeah, they held them there. Yes. So history noted that the judge ruling over the case was a segregationist, but he was afraid of being impeached by the Justice Department. So what happened is the state, Mississippi, did nothing. So the Justice Department on the federal level had to come in. And so this judge is there and he knows like, I, if I, like everyone's watching me. So even though he is a segregationist, he, he kind of judges and like he's supposed to be impartial and this is why it's important yes. to vote on federal level because if a fucking <sighs> republic uh, well whatever a southern oh a southerner was in that fucking this stuff would not have been happening justice no. department would do nothing like yes. the justice department did nothing under trump right so um the charges so i couldn't find clear charges but i want to note that you know like i said it, it was the federal government that had to step in. And a core website noted that they were charged with federal conspiracy and that no one was charged with murder. Mm. Right? They had this conspiracy to commit murder, this conspiracy. And, and basically, um, the conspiracy is because the police department conspired with the Klan to attack these men. And so they were able to do that. And so um, the sentencing, according, um, basically seven of the 18 defendants were found guilty by an all-white jury, but none, again, of murder. It's just of this conspiracy Is charge, be, even the deputy. Because they don't know who committed, who actually did it? Is that why? They can't, we can't they yeah. just charge them all? I mean, what the fuck? Somebody's going to flip, right? No, no. So essentially, they're, they're convicted of violating the civil rights of these men. And um, included in those um, seven defendants, like I said, were the deputy price and that imperial wizard Bowers. And here's what the judge had to say. Um, they killed one racial slur um, regarding the young black man, one Jew, and a white man. I gave them what I thought they deserved, which was like six years in prison. Basically nothing. This is the judge. And basically, it was three to ten years, and none of them served more than six. So even though the civil rights move, so what I found interesting is at the time the civil rights movement saw this as a win, which I was like, what? But it's because no one had ever been convicted or ever held accountable in any way until this case, and mm. so they're like, this is a like, it's a step, right? Wow. Um, the preacher killing, he went free because one jury member couldn't convict a preacher. <gasps> that was a holdout. Like, oh it's a my preacher. God. I can't convict a preacher. Yeah. The preacher's having people killed, but. Yeah. Yeah, he's a real man of God. Yes. The fuck? Oh, and years later, Bauer, the Imperial Wizard, had this to say about oh his conviction, God. and he references Killen. Imperial Wizard. I know. It's like, it's so stupid. It's just so small dick energy. It is so, uh, so, what's, uh, S, S, S D E? Yeah. It is. It's S D E. <laughs> it's S D E. It's such small dick energy to name yourself Imperial Wizard. I know. And then ask others to do the same I thing. Know, Call I mean, me Imperial Wizard. It's so dorky. God, go get fucked. God, please. So he says, quote, I was quite delighted to be convicted and have the main instigator of the entire affair walk out of the courtroom, a free man, which everybody, including the trial judge and the prosecutors and everyone else knows that that happened. Like smug, I'm glad of it. Look at it. Like, it's so awful. All right. So some of the aftermath, the inscription of James Cheney's grave reads, mm. There are those who are alive, yet will never live. There are those who are dead, yet will live forever. Great deeds inspire and encourage the living. Wow! I know. Who in the hell put that I on know. there? I know. It's so, so it's incredible. It's horrible. It's poor baby. So history reported that in 2005, they went after Killen again, and he was found guilty of three counts of manslaughter. <gasps> oh my gosh. And this openly racist white supremacist found himself sentenced to 60 years <gasps> in jail. Holy shit. Now, 
it sucks. This is similar was, to last week. Yes. Wow. So it sucks because he was 80 years old at the that's, time. Well, that's but right. you know, to die, be this old yeah, man and to die box. alone in jail, and he died in 2018. Ooh. And during the trial, it was revealed that Killen was the one who rounded up the Klansmen to attack these men, and oh. um, then he went to a funeral to establish. So the attack occurred. An He's alibi. like. You guys do this. I'm going to be over here at this funeral. He establishes an alibi. Like, he had it all planned out. Wow. I mean, this hypocrisy of religion. Like, he's yeah. this preacher, and he spent his life talking about God. I, I, ugh. It's incredible. In 2010, though, um, the AP reported that Killen tried to sue the FBI for witness intimidation, oh, claiming they yourself. struck fear into witnesses using someone he claimed was called the Grim Reaper. And he tried to get millions <laughs> of dollars the case was dismissed. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he literally I, does yes. every Sunday. He puts the yes. fear of God into yes, people. Yes, he's that fire and To brimstone. keep them racist, to keep them fearful, yes. to keep them on his At side his, his with his bullshit. Pulpit. Yes. He fucking encouraged people to murder people. I mean, Ugh. give me a fucking break. Yes. Piece so, of shit. Rotten hell. Yes. So 50 years later, according to NPR, uh, Schwarmer's widow had this to say. Mm. Quote, the state was complicit in so much of the violence. It encouraged racism and participated in it. The state refuses to acknowledge and make amends for its racist past and role in the terror. Yes, absolutely. You know, they still are complicit. So some points of interest. Mm -hmm. So like I said, the movie Mississippi Burning from the 80s starring Gene Hackman was based on this case. Um, and then one thing I want to note is that the two white boys that went missing, mm. they came from prominent families up north. Mm. That's why the day after, oh. when no one, that's what I think, right? No, absolutely. Um, is, it, I, I think if it was just Cheney, um, I, I don't think it would have gotten the attention of the federal government or the people. I just think that their family right. had very, you know, strong connections. There And there wouldn't have been convictions either. And uh, there may not have been convictions as well. And so it's it's like when the pretty, you know, blonde white, blonde, girl. white girl with the big blue eyes goes missing, the Jean Benets of the world. Yes. You know, there are the beautiful black and brown children that go missing too, but like they need our attention and they, there's still issues with that. Yes. Um, in 2014, the men were awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by Barack Obama. Wow. Um, there is a James Earl Cheney Foundation, and that's where I got a lot of the info on um, Cheney's early life. And I wanted to know what they do. So their mission is to, quote, empower all citizens. Mm -hmm. They work on protecting constitutional rights. They, con uh, they conduct voter registration. They provide legal counsel. And the foundation also, quote, observes, investigates, and documents allegations of unequal treatment under law or by the government or any abridgment of our constitutional rights. Wow. Now, I'm not sure if the foundation, though, is still going because when I was looking at it, they had this notice for like a 2004 Freedom Ride. And it was like, sign up for the 2004. And I'm like, oh, is this just like an older page that's still mm -hmm. here? I hope this foundation is still going. Yeah. Um, one thing I found in my research that was really upsetting is that more murders occurred during that time that were probably linked to the Klan. And they definitely feel very linked to civil rights and to voter registration. Um, the Zinn Education Project noted that when officials dragged the river, so they were looking for these guys, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, it's like weeks are going by and they're dragging the river. Mm. When they drag the river, they find yeah. eight other bodies. <gasps> eight. Eight other bodies. Oh, my God. All black men or boys. <gasps> One was a 14-year-old boy wearing a, a core shirt, right, which is the organization that they belong to. There were two 19-year-old boys, uh, Henry D. and Eddie Moore, and five other men who went unidentified. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, but they didn't get the attention, right? Oh, my God, Tina. Here's another awful thing. When Reagan was campaigning later, you know, yes. in the early uh, 80s there. He rolled into Mississippi crowing about states' rights. Ooh, and, that's a dog whistle if I ever heard one. And he does his little stump speech in close proximity to where those men's bodies were found. What? That's where he did his speech. Like, to me, like, that's, saying, that's sending a message. Of course. And that's... Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I mean, we all know that, that Reagan is, is trash. Yeah. But uh, this 
I had never heard of. That's it, that I, that he would it, go no. to this place where this, these men's bodies were found in that ditch. And you're giving this speech to people in Mississippi, like you have sent a very clear even message. If, even if it That's was somebody, very deliberate. Yeah, yeah, but even if it was somebody in his uh, campaign, like let's right. say he didn't know. Let's say the yes. candidate just gets out of the fucking bus and gives yeah. a speech, which it's not forgivable, right. honestly. But what if it, it, either way, somebody, somebody knew, knew, knew and planned that's, that. That's right. It's, it's, that's right. it's, uh, I was like, how do we win this Mississippi? How yes, do we win this area? This is oh, where we go with the dog whistle over here. Oh my God. Woo. Uh-uh, honey. Awful. Not good. So Core, I wanted to mention something about Core. So um, Core began as this integrated, nonviolent, you know, uh, group that, that did the boycotts and did all of this. But after so much violence in the movement, mm -hmm. um, they started to limit white involvement. Mm. And they started focusing more on black power and black nationalism. And, of course, because you're seeing leaders and people die mm -hmm. and, and, and you're going to continue to do civil disobedience. You know, I get it. I get yeah. I get where this is, why they would make that move. Um, you know, we have, it's enough is enough, right? Yeah. You have so many um, prominent black leaders being assassinated. Yeah. And one of the leaders, um, McKissick, even said, of, of one of the leaders of CORE, when it made this, Shift said, uh, quote, nonviolence was a dead philosophy. Ooh. You know, like, we're done. Yeah. We're done. Yeah. And and good. They It, it needs to be like that. Uh, Goodman's older brother commented when the case was officially closed in 2016, and this is noted in The Atlantic, he said um, he really placed the blame on white America. Mm. And he said, quote, society does not want to try itself. So how do you close a case? It doesn't make sense in the greater scope of things. The whole country was explicitly and implicitly involved in this thing we call racism, mm. which is really economic advantage and capitalism looking for cheap labor. Damn. And that has separated the haves and have-nots. Golly! Yes. Holy cow! Yes, that's the brother. And I, 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 I want to correct myself because I think I said that they were both Jewish. I think one was, um, you know, uh, uh, probably Protestant, white boy. One was Jewish. And then we have the young black man. So yes. I think I was wrong on that. So I'm going to correct it while it came to my mind. Mm -hmm. um, I found uh, an article from the Times where the incredible John Lewis mm. spoke about his activism and mentioned these murders and how he felt guilty because he had recruited them oh, to no. do this work. He was only 24 himself. I mean, come and on. And how could he have known that this would happen? I and he said it took him 30 years to return to that spot because of the guilt he felt. Wow. You know, because he was like, hey, go down there. But I, I also think that a lot of people, <sighs> oh. they like these young men, they knew what they were risking. Yes. You know what I mean? And they knew that it was, if their lives were, you know, right. this was something they were willing to risk yeah. their lives for. Oh. Which is unfortunate. Voter registration. Voter registration. But, Come on. You know, I don't know if you should feel guilty. I definitely think that oh, that's but what I, people... Yeah, but I mean, I can imagine like oh. being this young person and then that thing happened and yes. you go, oh my God, I told that kid to go yes. there. Yes, yes, you yes know? of course, oh. of course. So that's the story of Mississippi burning and the murder of Cheney, Goodman, and Schwerner. Oh my God. I know. But... Is this what it I is. should expect every week moving forward? <laughs> no, no. I'll, I'll try to do No, something. no. Do it. You live, cover all what I you know. want to cover. I'm I just know. asking if I should take a value for it <laughs> before I come to the podcast. It's just... There's so much... Oh, forget There's it. just so much... There's Not only so that, much history. There's so, so many, much there's, history. I mean, there's so many that are famous, but you're saying they're dragging the river. How many people do we How many people do we not heard of that we've never heard of? Like, know. And those those people, like their families. Yeah, they're missing who's their that, Who's that 14-year-old boy? They, they didn't have a name. But he was part of that. At 14, he's wearing that shirt. He wants to make a change. He want, you know? Oh, and some adults, hope. some grown-ass adult men kill him and throw him in a river? It's a child. It's, it's disgusting. Oh. So, no. yeah. But I'm sorry. This is how we looked in the last episode. <laughs> know, if you watch the YouTube, I'm just like this whole time. I think at the end of your I story, know. I was like, I know. oh, I, know. I can't. I know. Well, listen, you know, the sad part is I don't see it. How is it any different? Yeah. Now. I mean, we, we yeah. There's still so much change that needs to happen. Yeah. So many kids that need 
to be protected. And I think that it kind of shifted, like maybe the voter registra registration and everything changed, but I think that the lawmakers also changed where it was like thing, other things became important and now we're refocusing on this. And I think that people take cues from their elected officials. So if you have an elected official who's saying like critical race theory yeah. or whatever, the people are going to take their cues from that. They say that, oh, voter registration's not, is fake or, yeah. you know, it's, it's, Fraud, it's corrupt and... or you can't, you know, don't do it. Then I think that people take their cues from that. And so it gets people fired up, yeah. you know, and it's, they really hold a lot of responsibility in the language that they use and the things that they say. Yes. And, and, and instead of trying to get like a sound clip on the news by being, um, outrageous, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just crazy. Michelle Rayner, I don't know who said it, uh, cause she didn't say she said, but she had a tweet out this morning that said it's, what is it? It's February 10th. Something was had about the 15 week abortion ban. She was in a committee and somebody actually, I think it was somebody testifying, compared abortion to the murder of George Floyd. Think about that. Think about that. What is happening? I, I, I don't understand what's happening. I, I saw, um, there's this guy, um, his name is escaping me, but he's sort of like a Jordan Klepper kind of guy, and he goes mm -hmm. around and he asks people, and he asked a woman, you know, uh, where did the socialist agenda, how do we stop the socialist agenda? Mm. And she's like, it's, it start, we have to stop kids from journaling. It all started 30 years ago when schools had kids like write in journals and they would ask them questions and then the government like gets all this information and like that's how they got like extra funding for different things because like oh. it, it's 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 a that's it so is like random bonkers. person like a yes random... but this is like and and then there was another one about how 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 biden isn't president, you know, you've heard this, that Trump is really president and mm -hmm. that Biden isn't president and that Biden is on a set that looks like the White House. It's a television set. See, I don't have time for I, this. It's, I don't have but, time But for there's that. a group of people. That's all right. That are lit, that this is what they believe and they're out there Listen. voting and fighting. That's and okay. And they're living in La La Land. That's all right. Let them live there. You know what? No, Everybody... but we can't let them live there because oh. they're, 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 they're the ones that are, are, are pushing through these crazy bills and allowing this to happen because they're like agitated. This agitated little base of nuts. Well, <laughs> there's only so much time in the day. <laughs> You know, and so like you gotta you gotta Ooh. schedule that out. How do we? And then, that last what, thing on my list is trying to figure that out. This is what we are fighting against. Like this is the these are the people we're fighting against. Yeah. You can't fight crazy. No, no. So no. so like how are we winning? How we're are not. We we're not winning. That's the whole point. The whole point is we're help not. us, somebody. Well, I'll tell you this much, honey. I'm going roller skating oh. in about 12 minutes. Okay. I'm so fucking excited. I'm so excited. It's like my favorite thing of the, in I, the whole I world. I really, I need to like at least put a pair of skates on and <gasps> see what happens. Yes. Because I'll, no, I'm good. I need, I, I need some knee pads. Yes. And a helmet. Yes. No, that helps. I think that'll help you feel more confident. Yes, in I'll look ridiculous, but no. I feel like I can look totally cute in a helmet and some like elbow Girl, pads. Girl, you look totally cute in a paper <laughs> fucking bag. You're adorable. Totes adorbs. Totes adorbles. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Also, P.S. I love you. Oh, I love you. And how did Valentine's Day? Yeah. All right. Cool. I'm gonna go get a big bag of candy. Oh, that sounds so fun. I had my kids on Valentine's Day. Thank you, Lord. <gasps> oh. Thank you, universe. Oh, baby. I won't be alone. Uh, <laughs> you know, so we never do. I never do anything on Valentine's. I always Day. get them little cards and little candy, like yes, the little four pieces that's what, in a candy that's box. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. I do. I do that too. I think I'm gonna get my son Butterfingers because it's like his favorite. Oh, nice. All right. Oh, uh, 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 bye. Bye.